Good morning. Happy Sunday. I'm sitting on the floor in my film studio uh, because the light's pretty poor today and this is actually a little bit better. So please ignore the less than attractive and aesthetic background, but hey, we do what we have to do. Anyway, this is going to be hopefully a quick video response to um, the Instagram challenge that has been designed, created by uh, Patrick of In the 78 Cards and Kelly of uh, The Truth in Story for the month of March. Um, it's called hashtag within without advice and that's based on a spread from the companion book for the Mary L. Tarot which um, Patrick's going to be working with. Uh, I'm not going to go into the details because Patrick's done an excellent video that takes care of that and I'll just put a link to that down below so you can go and check that out. The purpose of this video response is to explain why I'm using the deck I'm going to be using <laughs> because the idea of the challenge is that you use a really meaty, hard-hitting, challenging deck that, you know, would normally take you out of your comfort zone and that you work, you know, intensively using this particular spread every day for the month of March. Um, and, well, first of all, and this is, this is no, you know, no pat on my back, I don't have any really challenging decks, not because there aren't challenging decks out there, there are loads of them, but because I'm not particularly drawn to them, you know, I, I'm i lazy, you know, I want this for the most part to be a pleasurable experience and I want to get something out of it and most of the time, you know, in order to get, you know, something useful out of it, I, I need to, I need to be able to work with the cards I'm using. If they're going to be really deep and, and confusing and I have to refer to the guidebook constantly, Where's the fun in that? I mean, you know, I know it has its place, and and um, yeah, um, you know, I'm not dissing that that kind of thing, but it's just I've had challenging decks in the past that I've just I've just given up on and and sold on or given away, so I don't really have anything of that ilk in in my collection at the moment. Um, the other thing is that I made a commitment a few days ago and I posted it on my blog for accountability folks that I would only use the Tarot Balbi for the next two weeks. Now I, I know that doesn't sound like much of a challenge you know two weeks but really to use one deck and one deck only for a whole two weeks is challenging for me. It's really challenging for me. I had to clear my desk of all the decks that I, I normally have sitting out. They've all gone back in their bags and their boxes and I've, I've sort of put them to one side. I, they're not far away but they're sort of they're not just sitting there handy and the, the, the tarot bell is front and center uh, so if I suddenly get the urge to pick up some cards and start shuffling it is, it's bell or nothing. So, so that's that. So I've already committed to the Balby for the next couple of weeks and to be honest in its way it is a challenging deck for me because I'm I'm, you know, hardcore Rider Waite Smith, um, and this isn't. Now, I've mentioned the Balbi in, in one of my um, 31 Days of Tarot videos, and I think I said that it was a Marseille type, which isn't true. I mean, it's reminiscent of Marseille, but it's actually, the cards are based on the images designed by Eudé Picard, uh, which was published in 1909, and he had his own uh, meanings for them, which in some cases are Rider Waite Smith-esque um, in, in a lot of it. Sometimes it's a little bit sort of out in left field or it's like the same general idea about a card but viewed from a completely different angle. Um, so anyway, I'm, I'm sitting here talking about it. I mean, look here, what we got there, Five of Cups. Now that's not your normal Five of Cups image, um, you know, and you have to work with that. And the meanings, although not off the top of my head, but the meanings could be somewhat different or some a, a very different sort of emphasis. Can you see it all right? Yeah, you know, I, I bet it's a little gorgeous. And as you can see, they're they're not not illustrated. They're not illustrated in the way that the Rider Waite Smith is sort of you know here's a picture of of the meaning of the card. They are illustrated. There's lots of information in there. I mean, what have we got? What's that in the middle? That seems to be a plant growing in a pot. That might even be a pineapple. And the pot has an owl face on it, and you've got flowers at the bottom, and birds at the top, and a butterfly, um, and of course the the uh, pentacle, pentagram in the middle. Um, oh, and I should point out, you know, that butterfly. In this system, cups are air. Cups are air, and swords are water. So, you know, I mean, there's a difference straight away that's going to affect the meanings of the cards, possibly quite significantly. Um, and the uh, there's a. Uh, Wheel of Fortune is always one of my favorite cards. Uh, look at that one. 
there's some stuff going on there, you know, and you've got um, zodiac signs, planetary signs, you've got numbers, you've got all sorts of stuff going on. So it's a fun deck to work with. And it's it's challenging, and I, and I have to work at it. It's You know, I can't just throw it out and go, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think it's a worthy choice for this challenge. Um, yeah, so I'm hoping that you, you know, loads of people will take part in it because I'd love to see what you're doing. Um, so in a way, this is a shout out for um, for Patrick and, and Kelly. But, you know, really, you know, if you're seeing it first here, first here and you're not actually already subscribed to Patrick, ugh, you need to sort your priorities out. <laughs> anyway, so that's that. I'm going to keep it quick um, and see you there. Take care. Bye.